Exodus 21, 23. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for strife. All praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweshai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you another lesson. And what's playing in the background is a video called uh, Beyond Tulsa, the secret history of flooding black towns to make lakes. And this was on the Amber Ruffin show. And you see, I've taken away the sound and uh, so that there's no uh, uh, copyright strikes, you know. And I do uh, declare the uh, Section 107 of the Copyright, copyright Act. All right, then you, which gives you the fair use of uh, of uh, of information for educational, you know, criticism and things of that nature. But uh, what you're looking at is a is a lake, is a town that had been flooded out, and on these lakes like this, you know, these Edomites they they tube and they they water ski and they build up. They set up cabins and houses and they enjoy their lives uh, on and around these lakes. And these were prosperous towns of Negroes. As a matter of fact, I got an article that I want to read. Um, about five black Americans towns hidden under lakes and ultimately from history books. All right. And. Uh. And this article was put up by Parker Dykett in July 8th, uh, 2021. All right. And it reads, shout out to Amber Ruffin. See, so it's, it's, you know, I guess whoever they were inspired to do this after this particular show. It says, um, in a video clip that has now gone viral, Ruffin kicked off a segment on, of her Amber Ruffin show by introducing viewers to a historically black American towns that had been destroyed and, and buried by lake or natural park. They're often referred to as drowned towns were often talked about Lake Lanier, but sadly there's plenty more where that came from. As a matter of fact, I believe it's way more than five. This is just five that they're talking about. Um, but it says here are five you should know about. Oscarville, Georgia, Lake Lanier is a popular weekend destination known for fishing, boating, and so much more, including the eerie reputation that has been deemed as haunted in Georgia. But a lesser known fact is that the lake sits on the top of a ta black town of Oscarville. Oscarville was burnt down in 1912, and more than a thousand residents were forced to flee following the allegations of rape. Rob Edwards was arrested in uh, September uh, 1912, along with Ernest Knox and Oscar Daniel, both teenagers, uh, all, all, um, both teenagers, all accused of raping and murdering a young white woman, of course, named May Crow. Edwards was dragged out of jail, beaten with a crowbar and lynched from a telephone pole. So it should have been over. But we know he was innocent of that anyway, because that sort of thing happened all the time uh, around that time frame here in America. All right. But continue on with the reading. Um, Daniel and Knox went to trial and were found guilty on the same day the boys were sentenced to death by hanging. After the trials and the execution, white men known as white raiders forced black families out of their homes by bringing their land, uh, by bringing their land, churches and schools, burning. All right. Once black families fled, 
Lenia Lake was built on top of the town and the town was burned, the burn was burned down. Number two, Coaglia Benson, Alabama. Turns out Alabama's Lake Martin is built on a previous majority black town of Coaglia. It's home to the first black owned railroad started by William E. Benson and the Black School of Coagla Academy of an Industrial Institute. And see, every time Jake achieved autonomous wealth here in America, independent of Esau Edom, after slavery, see, they were doing better than Esau Edom, because the truth of the matter is, is that eight Jake, um, the sons of Jacob, the slaves, they had all the know-how. They knew how to farm and how to build, because they had been forced to do it for free for 400 plus years. So they had all this knowledge. So once they were actually left alone, you know, and uh, because all through the 1800s, late 1800s and the early 1900s, they were achieving such things. All right. Like the like the uh, place that was burned down here in Chicago, referred to as the Black Belt, which equaled Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma in wealth. And, and, and in some cases, and some say that it was actually even greater, but they burned it. They burned it and destroyed it and took it all over. And now it's majority white people own the businesses and the and the. Um, in the mansions and everything in that area to this day. But it says, William and his son, Benson, who was enslaved and freed, he went on to journey to rescue his sister in Florida, who was separated during slavery. And they made their way back to Alabama. John purchased a thousand acres of land sold to black families where he, was, where he formed a community. William helped his dad expand the family business after William's death in the closing of the school, Coagula was destroyed to make room for Lake Martin. So, and we and we don't even know the bloody, gory details of what was done to the citizens, all right? Uh, Seneca Village in New York City. Seneca Village began in 1825, and at its peak, it spanned from 82nd to 89th along what is now the western edge of Central Park. And I've been to Central Park and enjoyed it. There were trees there over a thousand years old. Some so they, 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 so they cut them. Some were so wide you can actually drive cars through them. All right. Um, but what I didn't know was this dark history as I walked through Central Park many a times over. And there's plenty of statues celebrating uh, white people all through Central Park or Edomites, I should say. There's no such thing as white people. By the 1840s, half of the African Americans who lived there owned their own property at a rate five times higher than the city average as reported in timeline. Hmm. In 1857, Seneca Village was torn down uh, for the construction of Central Park. The only thing that remains is a commemorative plaque dedicated, also one plaque, in 2001 to the Lost Village. So... And we don't, and we weren't, once again, we're not told of the gruesome details of the removal of these people. So they were homeowners, so you know they just didn't leave their homes. Um, they were forced out of their homes violently. And I'm going to try and search up this history to find out exactly what happened. All right. Um, number four was Susanna, Alabama. Susanna or Susanna was also flooded by Lake Martin. According to Alabama Living, more than 900 bodies were moved from cemeteries before the land was submerged. Hmm. The once included gold mine, a school, two mercantile grist mill, a flour mill, a sawmill, and a blacksmith, and the church. Once again, we were spared. We're not told the bloody, gory details uh, that was done to the people there. To get them off their land. And number five, uh, I left this video playing in the background. And number five was uh, Vanport, Oregon. In the 1940s, Vanport was the center of a booming shipyard industry because of the World War II and quickly became the second largest city in the state. But as, but as World War II saw white males drafted to overseas, a labor shortage pulled in a great migration of blacks from the South with soldiers being drafted overseas to fight in the, in the war. Oregon saw the labor shortage. This resulted in the great migrations of, so I just read that the new workers needed places to live as Al Albina neighborhood was the only place where black people could live legally 
It became too small for the growing population of black Americans and Vanport was built as a temporary housing solution. At its peak, 40,000 residents and 40% were African American. But then in 1948, massive flooding erupted in the neighborhood and city officials didn't warn residents of the dangerously high water levels. Many didn't evacuate in time. Hmm. All right. And the town was wiped out within a day. Uh, 18,500 families were displaced, more than a third black Americans. Uh, today, the area is known as Delta Park. And I'm sure that there are, all, there are homes that all around it um, with docks and boats. And they, uh, you know, and they pull their families around to enjoy uh, tubing, water skiing and fishing and things of that nature. All right. So there's going to be a payback for, for this sort of murder and savagery, which has been done, which is something that the, uh, you know, the Edomites dwell. I mean, uh, not uh, dwell, but but dread. They they dread this. This is why they don't want critical race theory or, or what I refer to as critical race historical facts to be brought out, especially when there's imagery of 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 of, of their people, because often you can identify uh who a lot and so what that is is a list of all the different places what happened to they just shot by the screen by the way, but they don't want uh, you know their their uncles and their and their grandfathers and their grandmothers and their great aunts to be identified uh, you know in these clips and in these images that's why they they hate it so much because they can actually see their family members in the imagery, all right, so. Uh, Let's uh, go back to the scriptures and, you know, and get ready to close this thing up. This is the book of uh, Numbers, because there's only one way to cleanse this problem, to make this problem right. And it's, and it's given to you in the book of Numbers, the 35th chapter, the 33rd verse, and it reads, all right, so ye shall not pollute the land. Wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So these Edomites, their blood has to be shed to make this right. There is no pulling up your bootstraps or saying, oh, forget it, forget over it, or you weren't there. No, that's why they're complaining of, uh, uh, of, 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 of unrighteous fathers. You know, they're complaining about, the, they're making complaints about the sins of their fathers because they are their fathers. It falls on them. The debt was paid. I mean, the debt the debt has to be paid by them. You know, as if you if you in a if you in a uh, restaurant, you know, with your dad and your uncle, and they get up and leave the restaurant, you know, and you're still sitting there, they're gonna be looking at you to pay the bill. So it doesn't matter. Well, you know, if you didn't do it, or you know. Well, you know, I, I, I was just with them. I didn't, you know, that's, they don't, they know. The bill has to be paid. That's the way it works. This is um, Ezekiel 25, 12 and, uh, through 14. And it reads, and this is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. There's this set of scriptures here. And it reads, uh, starting in verse 12, Thus saith the Lord power, because Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and avenged and revenged itself upon them. Therefore, and that revenge is for what? For the downfall of Rome. See, Rome fell at the hands of the Israelites, so-called Negroes, and these Negroes ruled all of Europe and parts of, uh, uh, of Asia, Asia Minor. All right. They ruled it for over a thousand years. OK, the evidences of that are overwhelming. All right. The, even the Moors, the Moors that ruled uh, in uh, Portugal and Spain and all the relics that are left behind is the evidence of that. That was a 700 year rule. But altogether, it was about a thousand year rule until Esau Edom came back into power. So the slavery of the northern and the southern kingdom after the fall of Granada, Spain, when, when uh, Cristobal Colon sailed to the Americas to get the north, that was all payback. For you know, for for the amount to the Israelites, all right. Because remember, the the slave trade started with so-called natives and in, 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 in Indians, so-called Hispanic people. Then they begin to uh, 
uh, go to, to the west coast of Africa. All right. So, you know, they they brought, you know, when Portugal and Spain went down, you know, a lot of those a lot of those Negroes went into slavery uh, and a lot of them came to the Americas in different places throughout Europe. You know, but that's another lesson for another time. All right. But the uh, but the but the triangle slave trade, you know, really began with the so-called Hispanics. All right. They went into slavery first. All right. Just so you know that the so-called Indians of the islands in the Americas. OK, but um, going back to Ezekiel 25 and 12, it said, Thus saith the Lord, because Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. All right. Learn about the black Caesars in September Severius. All right. And they became the rulers of Britain and London and all those places. They're your true Anglo-Saxons, not, you know, all these imagery that you see in all these television shows like the Vikings on History Channel and all that. Though and the people that's in the Scandinavians and the Swedish people and all that, those in, the, in, in uh, Britain and Ireland, in, you know, those aren't the, uh, the people that are there now are not the people that were there during the time of the history that they're referring to in these television shows. They were more like the Miss Amber on the, uh, on the screen here. All right. But verse 13, thus saith the Lord power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from teeming and they of their dance shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power. All right. So people always say, you know, or I've often said, hey, vengeance is the Lord's. He just told you it's through the hand of his people, Israel. So life for life, tooth for tooth, stripe for stripe, pain for pain, burning for burning. It all has to happen to the so-called white man, his woman and his child. With that, I'll give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, Wa'ababababab, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom.